Hi there, this is Heather of Shutterbug 101. Today I'll be going over the Nikon SnapBridge app on your phone, how to connect it to your Nikon camera, transfer images, and what else it can do. Let's get started. When it comes to using the SnapBridge app that is supplied by Nikon, you just have to download it on the App Store. And the app can do a few different things. Of course, it does vary from camera to camera depending on what the camera has the ability to do. So you can use it on their Coolpix cameras, you can use it on their DSLRs, you can use it on their mirrorless cameras, which is why I have the Z6 Mark II here to show us how it's done. Now, again, there may be features that are not available in some, while well, there are features available in others, and it's always difficult setting it up for the first time. Because when it comes to using the app, you have to introduce your phone to the camera, your camera to the phone, and after they've been introduced, they'll recognize each other every time. So it is something to keep in mind that this first time can be a little frustrating. Um, so. Let's go ahead and we'll get started. So what we want to do is we want to turn our camera on and then we want to go ahead, we want to go into the menu system. And then from the menu system, we want to go into the setup menu. From there in the setup menu, you're going to go ahead and connect to smart device. This is going to allow us to turn on the Wi-Fi connection, which is exactly what we want to do. Wi-Fi connection established. So because we have to introduce the phone and the camera for the first time on the phone itself, we're gonna go ahead and go into our settings. From there, we're gonna go ahead and go to Wi-Fi and we're gonna find Nikon Z6 II. From there, I'm gonna type in that password. From there, it's gonna give us a nice little blue check mark. Perfect. And we can go ahead and close that up and head right back to the SnapBridge app that I've already downloaded. So you may want to download this previous. So you do want to give it access to your photos. You will allow access to all photos. SnapBridge would like to use Bluetooth. That's perfectly fine. Here we go. We're gonna go ahead and accept that. Start. Welcome to SnapBridge, connect to camera. Okay, we are using the mirrorless camera. Okay, we have established a Wi-Fi connection. Right, we know very well that, that the camera is not connected to the internet, so we're gonna use cellular data. Sure. All right, so this is connected to camera via Wi-Fi. We're gonna go okay. SnapBridge would like to send you notifications. Yeah, this is up to you. I'm gonna put don't allow. I don't think it's necessary. All right, so from here, you can actually go to download photos. To view raw images, change these display settings. We're gonna go ahead, because I did them all in raw. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna view raw as well. We're just gonna view photos for now. Okay, done. So here's all of our raw images. Say I wanna save this one here. It's a nice one. Now let's see about downloading it. So what it's gonna do is because it's a raw image and phones do not handle raw well, um, we can do the original format, but the two megapixel JPEG, if you're just sharing it on social media or something like that, should do just fine. But let's see what also happens when we do the original format. Looks like that's going to take a little bit of time just due to the fact that it is a very large file. As you can see with the little blinking light here, the camera is working on getting that transferred. And now that that's done, we can actually go back to our photos here. So here is the JPEG image, which came out pretty fantastic. And you'll notice that the raw image labeled raw up here it's just coming out blank because I need to open it in a program that can read raw, like uh, Adobe Lightroom, something like that, where I can upload it and it's gonna know right away. But for now, I'm just gonna delete it because I'd rather just take it from the camera and put it right into Lightroom myself. 
but to share to her mom, to her friends that she got her senior photos done today, this would be a great photo to just be able to send right off from the phone. Pretty great. When it comes to other things you can do with the app, you also have the option to do remote photography. We're gonna make sure that we are properly connected here. And you'll see that when it comes to your home Wi-Fi, if you try and connect to one or the other, you may find that it has you run through this multiple times. Like my Wi-Fi immediately reconnected to my home Wi-Fi. And the reason that is because my home wireless is gonna be much stronger, bigger, badder than this little Wi-Fi signal that the camera puts out. So it's always really important that you remember that if you're trying to do this at home, you may need to reconnect to the camera several times. And now if you're in a cafe somewhere, if you're in the middle of the ocean on a cruise, then you're not gonna have any issues because guess what? That's, it's gonna be able to read this every time. So we're gonna go ahead we're gonna make sure that we reconnect to the camera here, getting our little blue check mark, going back to our snap bridge. And now you can see we are now connected to the device. Now it does have a little bit of lag there, but overall it's not too shabby. Let's go ahead and we'll focus it right in on the sign. So from there, I can go ahead and I can focus with my phone now. I can take a picture right from my phone and it's going to download that right into my photos as well. I should be able to change certain things like uh, cam the camera mode to the video mode. You can change your PSA and M mode here, which uh, what file format that it's going to be saved in, which is of course JPEG, how many pictures you can take, which is 478, what the battery level the camera is at. Now if I switch this from P to S, I should be able to now change my shutter speed accordingly. And that's gonna show us kind of how all this is gonna come out, which is nice. And then of course on the A mode, we can then change our aperture availability, the opening in that aperture. So and you can also adjust the exposure here, a little bit darker or a little bit brighter. We could absolutely do that. It looks like on some settings you can change your ISO. And also change your white balance so you can see how it gives a totally different feel depending on what setting you're on. And then we have some settings here. We have the self timer, the live view on or off, and then of course how you want to download the picture which is the original format or two megapixels. All in all, it gives you just enough to be able to find this very, very useful. And the fact that it can save raw to your phone if you have an application to read it is pretty darn cool. Other than that, that pretty much sums up what you can do here. You can see what you've downloaded to the phone. Uh, you can also do the cloud system, the unlimited auto upload, if you'd like to sign up for that through Nikon. And that's pretty much it. So when it comes to hooking up your Nikon camera to your phone to transfer pictures, to transfer video, to remote control your camera from afar, uh, when it comes to you being in a group shot, or even if it comes to taking pictures of hummingbirds from far away, you can absolutely find this app very, very useful but more useful in a situation where maybe you're not hooked up to your home Wi-Fi. So keep in mind that although these apps do have some oddly low ratings, it's because hooking it up the first time is not always super, super easy. So once you get this down, it should have no problem connecting at that point. If you guys have any questions, please leave me a comment in the comment section below and keep an eye out for more camera to app transfer videos. I've already done Sony, I've already done Canon, here's Nikon, Fuji, Panasonic, and Olympus are headed to you soon. Until next time, keep your art for inspiration, Shutterbugs. Bye.